The fine folks at Savoni asked me if I would review this telescope. It's the SV503. It's a refracting telescope with ED glass, and it has a uh, aperture of 80 millimeters and a focal length of 530 millimeters. And the telescope uh, sits fine on this mount right here. I equivalent to the, uh, what I had on here was the Orion ED80, which was a triplet. I believe this is a doublet. But the price difference, this is half what the ED80 costs. So that, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, but what about the telescope itself? I mean, it's a fine scope. It's got a fantastic rack and pinion uh, focuser on the uh, back end here with a 10 to 1 ratio and a fine tuning knob. Uh, and I've been finding the focus is, is very good. As a matter of fact, once I get it in focus, I focused it at 9 o'clock last night, and it was still in focus at 4 o'clock this morning. I didn't touch it at all throughout the nighttime hours, so it holds the focus very well. Uh, it comes equipped with rings. These aren't the rings. The rings that comes with uh, are these right here, but I already had the rings set up on my uh, earlier setup, so I just took out the one scope and put in this uh, in its place so they, they both fit perfectly. But it does come with these great rings. It's got the uh, uh, a one quarter inch uh, diameter holes at the top for mounting a, a, a guider scope like I have right here. And on the bottom it has a, a three eighths or a one quarter inch uh, hole, a screwed hole, so you can attach other devices to it. And then the dovetail just slips right into the, the general mount itself. So it fits very, very nicely on a standard mount. So here I have the scope sitting on my mount. I have a, a power supply right here and a dew strap uh, controllers. And these are my dew strap. Boy, we get a lot of dew here in Savannah, Georgia. And I also cover the uh, finder scope with dew straps. So I got it covered with the dew strap right now. Uh, it does go in and out, the, the sun shield or the uh, dew shield. And that helps a lot, but uh, you need these dew straps in a climate like mine. Now, if, you, if you're not so humid, you probably can get away with uh, out using the dew straps and just using the dew shield that comes equipped with the scope itself. And uh, another nice feature about this scope is over on the back side. If, if you want to frame your target, you can just simply rotate the entire system. Uh, to the field of view you want. It actually goes around 360 degrees, but the way I have it mounted right now, it runs into the back of my dovetail over here. I have a longer dovetail on this system because my camera and the field flattener that I have associated with it, uh, I need to be able to move the telescope back and forth to help balance. I could also move the telescope in the hoops itself uh, for balancing, uh, so maybe I could have gotten away with the uh, smaller dovetail that comes with the scope itself, but Again, since I already had it set up, all I had to do was take out these hoops, uh, take out the one uh, scope and put the other one in and tighten the hoops back up and I was ready to go. Uh, minus the dew straps, I had to put those on. So, you know, it wasn't all that difficult to swap them out. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the specs on this telescope. The S503 is an 80 millimeter ultra clear refracting telescope with a 560 millimeter focal length, resulting in a focal ratio of F7. The lens is coated by the process of ultra-wide coating, SMC, or super multi-coating. This doublet objective is designed with one S FPL 51 ED glass and one lanthanide glass. The extra low dispersion lens is brighter due to less light absorption and the multi-layer coating technology, which minimizes light loss even more. This virtually eliminates chromatic aberration. The results is the best color correction for an ED doublet lens. This lens is designed to produce sharper, more realistic images. The focuser, the gear ratio of the dual speed two inch tooth focuser is one to 10, which makes it easy to achieve accurate focus. For me, once I had the telescope in focus, it remained in sharp focus all night long. The focuser is designed to enable rotating a camera 360 degrees to allow for that perfect framing of your astrophotography target. It comes equipped with a two inch to one and a quarter inch tube adapter, which allows for the use of a two inch or one and a quarter inch eyepiece or camera. This meets the needs of your optional accessories. The S503 comes standard with adjustable tube rings and a dovetail, which allows it to attach to most telescope mounts. 
In addition, the dovetail plate has both 1 quarter inch and 3 8 inch threaded holes to attach to heavy duty tripods. The top of the tube rings have a 1 and a quarter by 20 threaded holes to attach either a guide scope or other accessories. Well, those specs look fine, but my job was not to look at the telescope, but to look at what the telescope sees. And that's what I have been doing for the past several nights, actually a couple of weeks now of testing. I wanted to see how this scope performs. And I started off with the uh, scope in its native form without any field flattener or extender or reducer on it. And uh, the results, well, it was pretty good. I mean, for a $450, $500 telescope, it was pretty good. Uh, now, on the edges, uh, there is, you know, the, the stretching of the stars on the edges. So, but I expected that. So, uh, look at some of these photos here. So, here's the Triangulum Galaxy M33. It came out pretty good, considering the scope in its native state. It had a little trouble with the uh, Pleiades. Uh, and Orion, well, it came out fairly well, too, but not perfect. Now, let's take a look at the uh, field flattener I put on the uh, other night. And last night I shot several targets with the field flattener. And I, I, I selected targets that had, had a lot of stars because I wanted to see how it handled the stars. Now, one problem I did have last night, the moon. <laughs> it was very bright. It's a waxing gibbous moon, only three days away from full right now. So there was a lot of moonlight out there. So I did use the Optolong L enhanced filter to help block out a lot of that light. But uh, some of these uh, images, uh, I, I, I was still fighting the light pollution from the moon, particularly with the Pleiades, since the Pleiades uh, and the moon were kind of close to each other, and the glare from the moon was definitely shining in on this picture here. But otherwise, it did pretty good. But look at some of these others. The California Nebula. I was impressed at the results that this scope produced with the California Nebula. And, the, and then there's the Western Veil Nebula. Look at all the stars. Look how clean those stars look from edge to edge, top to bottom. The uh, telescope itself uh, was performing all flawlessly last night. Uh, here's another image, the Iris Nebula. I wanted to see how it looked with the different colors. And uh, look at the blues in this, in the center. A lot of stars, once again, and the stars are crystal sharp and pinpoint. And again, I said, I focused it at nine o'clock last night and I didn't touch the focuser all night long and it just stayed in focus throughout the night. Now, the camera that I used in all the tests was the ZWO ASI 071 one-shot color camera. So tonight, I'm gonna to try it with the uh, 0.8X reducer uh, to see what the wider field of view uh, performs on this telescope. And another nice thing about this scope is the attachment back for the scope for the, uh, on the scope for the cameras is very nice. It has a three screw uh, uh, pressure band on there. It's easy to put on. You just simply slip it in, uh, set your camera um, to where you like it. I like to have it like so. And just lock down the uh, screws on the pressure plates and holds the camera into place. And there it is, it's locked into place right now. And again, if I want to rotate the field of view, once the telescope is set, I could just simply rotate the back end of the focuser uh, and it goes 360 degrees all the way around. Also, there's a nice little uh, shoe here for the standard uh, finder's uh, scope, or you could even put a guide scope there, but I recommend putting the guide scope on the top that way it's balanced much better. You don't want to have this heavy weight hanging off to the side. So if you're going to use a guide scope with the camera, of course, um, I would recommend mounting it on top of the tube rings. That way your scope remains in balance as it's moving throughout the nighttime hours. Anyway, all I have to do is connect my uh, USB 3 port here. And then I have the camera for the guide scope. I can connect that right into the uh, ZWO camera and I need a power supply. Here's the power supply right here, coming off the um, power hub. I'm ready to go. Now all I have to do is wait for that sun to set, and uh, you know, those, uh, this guy, you know, it's so nice to see some blue skies now. Uh, we've been having so many clouds across our region, but nonetheless, uh, the sky will remain mostly clear throughout the night, so uh, this will be my last test 
testing with the 0.8x reducer to get it from F7 down to F5.6. So the Savoni 503 is an excellent telescope for beginners or intermediate astronomers. And it's, it's, it's great for astrophotography. You can also use it for visual photography, but I don't use vis visible, <laughs> I don't use visible. You can use it for visible astronomy as well, but I don't do any visual astronomy. All my work out here is astrophotography. And uh, so I, I don't even have a, a, an eyepiece to go with any of my telescopes. I have lots of cameras though that go with this. Anyway, uh, this scope will do the job for any intermediate or beginner. And again, for the price, I think you're getting more than what you pay for. So thanks for watching and remember the heavens are filled with majestic wonders all in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies everyone.